Where do you see Blender in the next 5 years? Your thoughts would be appreciated in the comment section below. Personally, I think Blender in the next 5 years would have a permanent place in the industry and we can see it doing a lot of storyboardings in most VFX houses already. But would it have what it takes to fit or even replace a software within a big budget pipeline? This is an important question because if it's able to attain this feat, the confidence for other houses to make their switch will be high, thus cutting down a lot of post-production cost. Real quick, if you are a newbie piling up cash to go in for Nuke, Maya, Houdini or Cinema 4D, well, the best I can do is to congratulate you on the slow tactical investment you are making advances on. Those softwares cost hundreds and thousands to license and oh, not just that. In order to make your money back, you need to make sure you have a business running just so you can keep up with your perpetual sales. This makes it difficult for beginners to learn and too expensive for most independent artists and developers. For this reason, most people have dropped their morals just so they could fit into the crack world. Industry standard software for a very long time kept being the main go-to regardless of how tight you were on budget. Though most companies did their best to provide minor versions to their main software at low cost, they were still not enough for newbies and freelancers who wanted to build something from scratch without limitations. The awful part is there was no competitive alternative that sold for super less or went for free. This meant people with little to no budget had no chance of making their 3D dream a reality. Most people could have sought out for Blender back in the days but the thing is Blender wasn't good in those times, not because it couldn't do the job. No, Blender lagged behind in terms of usability, controls and simplicity. Blender 5 to 20 years ago wasn't a software you could confidently install on any computer. The software was just too old and took on a different learning curve, which was some type of a curse to any of its users who had moved on from other softwares. Blender by default chose to use right click to select something instead of left click, which most people including me had no idea it was optional from the preference tab. Meanwhile, every other 3D program used left click as its select. Most Blender illiterates back in the days including me couldn't use Blender simply because of this default option. I had Blender installed back in 2012 but never touched it until 2017 simply because the right click to select was just too odd for me. This was a decision Blender made in the 90s to separate selection from action to create a faster workflow. Weird right? Well, it's cool if you are used to it but this default selection was extremely unintuitive for new users to learn Blender because it went against years of training and muscle memory from other softwares. Blender's user interface was also much boring in its early versions. The middle grey considerably looked cool in the late 2009s but it looked very outdated by the 2014s to 2017 and this is something Blender users had to deal with for a long time until it was changed in 2019. Besides the outdated look, Blender had also managed to accumulate a lot of bad user experience, lack of features, reviews, ratings and bad blog posts over the years. Before 2017, I tried Blender the first time in 2013 but it didn't feel great using it besides I made a lot of mistakes but the good thing is I had a backup copy of 3ds Max from my teacher and for that reason I simply went back anytime I felt discouraged using Blender. That was easy. My muscle memory was built around 3ds Max so going back from other software was easy. For this reason, most of my early 3D modeling, UV mapping, texturing and rendering were made in 3ds Max. However, as a student, paying for newer licenses wasn't good for my health. As time flew by, I became a bit knowledgeable with the subsequent Blender versions and code model, Sculpt, UV map, but I always felt limited by the software. Since it was free, I just took it upon myself to keep studying the software for the next 5 years. Now, this is the luckiest coincidental decision I ever made because 
it only took a year or two for the next big thing to happen to Blender, which I never imagined possible. Blender 2.8 arrived in a class of its own. This particular release was its most impactful update in its long history. Blender has finally swapped their default right click for left click. Awesome. But you could still opt in for right click using the preference tab if that's the control you were used to. However, while the selection button is certainly the most memorable change, Blender 2.8 has also made a lot of improvements. The user interface received a well needed modernization and now has a cleaner and better structured dark grey interface. The 2.8 update also added a real time render engine that can be used in the viewport and final renders called EV. EV speeds up your workflow by giving you the ability to preview your shots in real time before rendering. Since then, EV and Cycles have been going through a series of massive updates leaving Workbench behind. This is great. Now you can have a photorealistic live preview in EV just to have a quick glimpse on what your final render would look like in Cycles. I have a video on why your rendering stacks in Blender where I explain EV and Cycles into details. How impressive Blender 2.8 was when I first tried it. I hardly could remember any other software that had undergone such massive updates like Blender 2.8. Now to the big question, does this mean Blender now had a shot to compete with other industrial level 3D software? Well, time will tell. It's December 10, 2021 and Blender Foundation had announced the release of Blender 3.0 to mark the beginning of a new era open source 2D and 3D content creation. Blender has finally leveled up. The first total version change for the incredible powerful widespread open source visual software in over 20 years. The software had a couple of features improved such as a number of improved viewport animations, control and aesthetic theme changes. The addition of an asset browser was the main killer update Blender users were waiting for and finally showed up in Blender 3.0. The company also mentioned a couple of supports they were getting from other major manufacturers such as Intel, AMD, Nvidia and Apple and it's working to ensure an equal and fully compatible experience disregarding the platform or operating system. At that point, people who thought Blender couldn't function at a certain level in the industry are beginning to change their minds. Most Blender users I knew decided to support their workflow with Blender because why waste money on something Blender can do for free? There came Blender 3.2. A few updates are now made to grease pencil, sculpting, painting, rigging and animation. The interesting thing about this was that Blender's old proxy system for managing linked assets from other files which was previously replaced by the new library override system is now completely removed from Blender. The old post library had been removed as well with the old panel still there but grayed out next to the button that converts the poses to the new pose assets. May they rest in peace. There were updates also made in the rendering space. You could now bake UDIM textures in Cycles. Previously, baking only worked in the 0 to 1 texture space. Cycles AMD GPU rendering on Linux machines is now available, at least for RDNA and RDNA 2 cards like on Windows. At long last, compositing and video editing also got to receive an update in the 3.1 release. Things are looking good, stable. And strong at this moment. I already made a video on Blender 3.4 you can watch later. Basem, Ebnez Hawk, are you ready to give up who you once thought you were? I am. 
few years ago, Blender was the main go-to software for beginners, but the hard work, dedication and consistency of Blender Foundation has granted the software a place in the 3D and VFX industry. Most big companies are adopting it into their workflow and many of them have opted to support the Blender project. UBI Soft, Gameloft, EA Sport, Infinity Ward, Microsoft, Epic Games, just to mention a few, have implemented Blender into their workflow. Also, it's used in most anime studios and Hollywood movies. A quick question here, who thinks Blender has a shot to replacing any industry software within a pipeline? Personally, it's a bit dicey to take an absolute position. It's both yes and no. Most companies have Blender running within their pipeline, but it's mostly used on less dense projects. The reasons are many, a couple of them would be 1. Blender support team is small. 2. FBX is still a mess in Blender. 3. Commercial closed C or C++ code are not allowed to link with Blender. 4. Pipeline proprietary code is still a challenge sometimes for Blender. With this said, if you choose to go with Blender on a Disney-like complete animation and you encounter a problem, dude, you are toasted. But wait a minute. That's just one side of the story because Blender is open source and for that matter, it's possible to create your own plugins or even change the source code of the program itself just like Houdini. Quick example, big 3D studios could implement their own extensions that are specific to their workflow. In this case, if you really want to use Blender badly on big projects and you feel it's missing anything, just patch it yourself. This is amongst the few reasons why Blender is the best free complete 3D software in the world. You can check out Ian Hubert, an indie filmmaker who released his very impressive 20 minutes short film, Salad Mag, Dynamo Dream, which was made completely in Blender by himself. Blender has arrived in the top tier of 3D modeling and VFX software and can compete with industry standards in some features. Blender 3.5 is said to have everything node merged into the software. This is big news. Everything node is set to take on Cinema 4D's MoGraph Expresso, 3D's Max's MCG and Houdini. With more and more money, implementation of Blender into bigger pipelines, support from bigger companies and the help of technically inclined men being put into the project, Blender as a complete 3D suit would become a force to reckon with in years ahead.